You know, believe it or not, I, I be, I've been in the march for more than 24 years, and I remember when there was a lot of gang gang violence in Front Street over here by, uh, by Rodriguez. In Front Street, it was so different because I, I grew here. You know, and uh, we started working on the Peace and Unity March, trying to make awareness that this community care about what went on here. This community care about little kids like Jessica Cortez and uh, uh, Jael Savala, which is only four years old, and Jessica Cortez, which is nine. All this, all these people here that you see are victims of violence. You know, their life was their life was taken away. And you know who hurts more, more the mamas. I have six kids and I don't know what I would do if my kid was taken away from me. I don't know. It is only God that gives them the comfort, the, the, uh, the encouragement to keep on alive, you know. Because we, as mothers, we know we love our kids a lot. And, and we know that we will care. We care about what happens to them. Oh, sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes they get a little strained away by peers. By peers, my mama are night and day praying for them. 
mamas are day and night praying for them you know because if you live in a society world where the peers take you away from what your mother and your dad taught you sometimes uh, they get into involved into the wrong things you know but it doesn't mean that we don't love them you know it doesn't mean that mama don't love them I worked in a jail facility for 23 years and sometimes mothers are certain type they think that well mother's like that maybe the kid is like just like the mother that's a lie because I've seen very beautiful wonderful mothers I've gone visit their kids and they're wonderful mamas you know they're wonderful mamas and we do this day this day just in remembrance of, of what goes on here in Watson this is a community that is very united so uh, me and Ellen well we work together Ellen's over here we work together. I want to first of all thank all the organization that helped do this event happen because it wasn't only me. I organized it, but Bahara Prevention um, put the application, helped me with the fee for the park. You know, there's money that we gotta pay all the times. Uh, Alancia, Alancia of the Oscar Rio, the Casa uh, Patria, Patres for Fiestas Patria. They also gave me a pretty good amount of money, which helped me pay the insurance that we need to be here. The insurance and uh, the toilet uh, that you see over there, we have we needed to pay something. Uh, Luis Alego also and my and my niece helped me with some money for the food that you see here. But uh, the seniors made the food, so we we'll thank you for the seniors who provided the burritos. There were there were actually seven seniors who did all those burritos. So I clap for the seniors. You know, they got up in the morning. They did all those burritos for the mamas here and you guys. You know, thank you for. Uh, Barrio Sonido, which gave brother coffee over there for you guys to drink also. They had done a great job also. And Si Se Puede brought their bread also uh, that you see. And of course I did something a little extra chocolate for the kids, you know, sometimes like chocolate. But you know, these uh, are these soldiers, uh, uh, are, I always save them. You know, I save the sarapes for a special occasion like today. So we're going to start with the mothers, but I want Felipe and Luis, I don't know if he's here. Because I don't see him, but since he's not here, I'm going to call over to Felipe because uh, he's the councilman and I want him to introduce the mamas. And I love the mamas to speak, to speak the word, how they feel, what they think, how they've been feeling up to now. Because this special day is for them, for their uh, their sons and daughters, for them. Thank Here's Felipe. Thank you. Call Debbie. Where is she at? Dexter. Dexter. Yeah. Oh, there she is. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. I'm calling you. Oh, really? Yeah. So I want to thank I want to thank everyone for being here today. Um, thank you for all the mothers for being here and keeping the spirit of their children alive and here with us. Many times when there's victims of violence, people don't speak up or don't say anything, and we allow that to normalize our communities. We can't, whenever any acts of violence happen, we need to speak up, we need to stand up, we need to keep a candle for our lost loved ones, so that we remind everyone of the humanity that we gotta have as a, as a community. I also wanna remind people, you know, even though Watsonville has, has been on a decline of gang violence or any type of violence, it's been about nearly almost two years without any gang violence. Straight ahead. Straight ahead, okay. And so we've had, we, we have had a lot of bike and pedestrian fatalities recently. Even last night, we had another fatality, uh, hit and run fatality last night. Today, November, uh, November 19th, you know, it falls on the same day of, it's called Na uh, National Observance Day for Bike and Pedestrian Victims. Today is that day as well. So we do have to say prayers and bring up the issue of also bike and pedestrian fatalities. We've had nearly, I think, eight this year alone. Um, it's climb and it's climbing up. So we do have to speak up about any forms of violence, whether it's gang violence, domestic violence, uh, vehicular violence, we have, to, we have to speak up to all lives lost. Uh, with that said, I want to thank everyone for being here. As Mary Lou pointed out, we're here, we started this back 
when Jessica Cortez and George Cortez were killed here in Pajaro. And I want to thank also the police department that has always solved the cases and make it's, it does bring something to the parents that the cases are solved. So thank you everyone for being here. And remember that we're here in memory of our lost loved ones and to have a voice for our lost loved ones to remind people to not make the same mistakes. Now we have <laughs> our next speaker, one of the mothers. Do you want me to hold it or do you want me to put it up here? Hi everybody. Hi. I'm glad to see a pretty good crowd here, including me. Hi, yeah. I am glad because it's a wonderful day, a beautiful day, because I thought it was going to be raining, but God didn't want it to rain. We need to have out here to be comfortable, you know. Uh, I'm here uh, as a, one of the mothers. I have a lot of mothers here today. Thank you for coming. I appreciate all that too. It's, at least I'm not the only one today. Um, I am here. Um, I am the. I am Rosa de Ramirez, and I'm the mother. I'm Antonio Ramirez Valdivia. Excuse me. He was shot and killed in the driveway in June of 1994. It's something that I could never forget. When one of my sons had to call me to let me know that his younger brother was shot. You can imagine when they tell you something like that. But it got me, got to give me strength because it's not that easy to live with somebody that you lost, that you love so much, and being my baby. I have another son that died, but he died. Um, on June, um, on, on May, before Mother's Day, he was my other son, but he died of a uh, like abuse of alcohol and drugs. There's another violence. <clears throat> so here I am today, with two gone, and two left with me. But I'm glad that God is with me, with my family. He helps me a lot. Because I don't think I'd be able to do it without God's help, right? Right. Um, it just with my son Tony. He had, um, I guess he was. Well, I don't guess it. Well, he was in the gang, and he was in the wrong place and the wrong time. They say that that shot wasn't. It wasn't. It didn't belong to him, but he was the one that cut it. I didn't get to see him until they called me and told me that his way was to uh, Stanford. If I wanted to see him, that I had to go over there. That night, I had to look for somebody to take me over there to see myself for the last time. It's not easy to go see him. He was dead, brain dead. I had to decide to uh, to disconnect me from life support because they told me he was a vegetable. I couldn't believe it, it was my son, but it was. And here I am today. I have him in my heart day and night. I can't live without him, but God is good with me. Just bear with him, but it's very hard for me to speak about it too much, but it does hurt when you lose a, a very close child of yours. I'm hoping that everybody that have kids will be able to participate with them, be with them. Don't let them go wild so you they could live longer with you and plan their future. My son had a future, but he never, he never got to it. He took his future and dream with him, or else he could have been a wonderful guy right now. He had a birthday 
this month on the 6th, he turned 43. Can you imagine him being a, a young man with a future on, on him? But I just ask for the parents to please be alert, work with your kids, stay closer to them, know where they're at, who's their friends, who their friends they hang around with, and make sure that you know where they're at in case of an emergency, you know where to go and look for them. So please parents, be with them closer. Plan uh, activities with them, be with them more than being alone in the streets day and night. Some kids, they like to go for walks. They're walking the wrong way. I just want to see people, young people, to be alive, not dead. They have futures. They need to go to school, finish the school, so they could show other other teenagers their problems. That if you get on the ball and get to school and finish your school, and you plan something for your future, you get to it. Don't take it with you. A lot of parents have kids, uh, grandkids, great grandkids. I have nine grandkids. I have eleven great grandkids. And I have to see if that I could see their future. Well, first of God, that could live longer. I don't know. But then let's be uh, faithful to, to God and faithful to your family. Be closer to your kids. And anyone else that you know, you're, you have nieces, nephews, just be with them. Help them and protect them. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Caroline Cervantes, and it's nine years that my son's been gone. I brought my grandkids with me so you could see them because this is my great grandson, Nathaniel, which never got to meet his grandpa. And this is his daughter that was four years old when he was gone. So she never really got to meet him. Either. And I've been trying to be strong for my grandkids because they need me because they don't have their dad here or their grandpa and so I am very lucky that God is making me strong to be here. Thank you. Thank you Rebecca Sudan. We'll have Debbie uh, come, and, uh, come all together from Salinas, you know, and then I'll call the rest of the mother from Watsonville. Anybody who will come from Debbie uh, from Salinas, you can come forward and you can each take a turn if you want to say something. We'll get to the other mothers right now. I know we have two more mothers from Salinas. Um, I don't know where they're at. If you're around here, can you please come up here, Judy and Minerva? Minnie, Charlie, thank you. Here they are. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm going to say hello, and I don't know that much Spanish, but I know how to say buenos dias. Today's the day the Lord has made, so let's rejoice. We're alive, and the sun is shining. God's good. I want to introduce, um, the, the, we're from Salinas. My name is Debbie Aguilar, and I'm... Um, we're a mother's group from Salinas, California. We're just your neighbor. Been here for a while. I've been coming, participating, but this time I brought some um, some backup. <laughs> backup, because we always need backup, right? Okay, so here's Debbie Sordo right here. This is Cynthia Castro, and this is Minnie Rodriguez, and this is Charlie Rodriguez, and I want to thank Maria Cabrubias for help uh, inviting us and giving us the time. Um, my son, I will say first off that I'm a mother actually, I'm a survivor as well. My son was a victim of violence, uh, of a drive-by shooting, and he um, was only 18 years old when he was doing something very simple, going to the local 7-Eleven right down the street, two blocks away from home. He went to 7-Eleven with his friend and never returned. Somebody followed him from the store. 
down North 1st Street in Salinas and they opened fire on him. And this was at 1 o'clock in the morning. His friend survived, barely. My son was, he died at the scene. Though well, he was shot with a 9 millimeter handgun. Multiple gunshot wounds. And I can say that uh, not as being um, callous, I know it's hard, but you know, in order to get strong, I had to read the coroner's report. Because as a mother, you know, right moms, that you want to know what happened to your son. Did your son really get pumped up with a, you know, I mean, people want to talk all the time. Don't listen to them. They're going to always want to pretend that they were at the scene because it's cool. But they're really, a lot of times, they're not really being a help. They're really making us hurt more. So I had to read the examiner's report. And so, yes, my son died instantly, which gives me relief and comfort because I serve a mighty God, and that's where I get my strength. And it hasn't been easy. It's been 15 years, and his case remains still unsolved. And I don't stand alone here today, right, moms from Watsonville and Salinas and Santa Cruz? But stay strong, okay, for the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go, okay? And just he's a God of justice. It hurts like heck. I've cried. I've had so much tears already shared, uh, poured out of me, but today I'm all dried up. <laughs> There's no more tears to shed today. I did a lot of that yesterday. But I want to pass it on to, to the mothers here to speak about their loved ones and... Um, there we are. There's our banner. There's my son in the middle, Stephen Joseph Aguilar, that handsome brute right there. Barely turned 18, right there in the middle. Right under loved. Because of him, I started the group. I had to survive either that or go back into the world of booze and all that bad stuff that he tried to get. He got me away from. So in his memory, because he sent me back to God, he says, go back to church. I've been sober for 15 years. And this December 16th, is 16 years, so hallelujah. Yeah, I think I did the math right, but it feels good. I ain't got no hangover today. God bless you all. <laughs> Stay strong. Yeah. All right, baby. Um, good morning. Um, my name is Debbie. Um, I'm here for the voice for my grandson, Paul Morales Jr. Um, he was 25 years old. He was born Christmas Day in 1989, and he was murdered January 7, 2015. He was the first murder in Salinas of 2015, and that year there were 40 murders in Salinas alone. And out of all of them, maybe five have been solved. The rest are still unsolved cold cases. And whenever I... I just feel that I need to be his voice. He was in his home when he was murdered. Um, he had multiple gunshots. It, it's terrible. It's something that nobody should go through. And um, that nobody else should go through. Um, you know, you go through so much criticism from the public and people who don't know, they've not, you know, and I didn't know before this happened to me about what goes through everything, what what happens. Not only was he a victim, but my family are victims also because every day we live with the pain. We live having to look in the faces to see who did this to him. He had a daughter who was one year old, one, one and three months. She knew her daddy, she knew her home. And she never went back to that home. And now she's going to be four years old. She has anger in her because she tells her mom, Where's my dad? Testing, testing. Anyway, she, she asks where her dad is. She at times blames her mother, you know, where's my dad at? The, the grandparents asking for them. And oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. It's just maybe I'm pressing it, but it's just um, it, this is just something that really affects the whole family, and you never, um, you know, it changes lives forever. Everybody's lives change, um, and um, I'm not sure what else. Just thank you guys. You have a good gathering here, and this is it. Just gives me so much joy in my heart to see how many people are here that come to represent these families that have went through it for 15, 20 years, 10 years, to know that we can still try and keep the voice of our children and justice, the voice, we, we need it, we are their voice for justice. 
and just thank you all for listening to me. Oh, you want to do it? Oh, to our next event in Salinas? Okay, we're going to have an activity. Um, uh, we have an annual Christmas event that we have every year. We've been doing it. Well, since uh, 2003, right after my son was murdered. So we do this Christmas event, and I'd like to invite all of you mothers, because you, lots of the mothers, we want you to come to, uh, to Salinas. It's December 2nd. It's a candlelight vigil. We do a Christmas event in this called Pri a Tree of Life, Tree Lighting, at a tree that we in Salinas planted and it's a Christmas tree and they light it up and it's very beautiful we will you will find comfort you will find that you are not alone I come here to you for a few years because uh, Maria invited me and, and and I love you all here you guys are beautiful people and please know you're invited December 2nd at Closter Park and it's at 3 o'clock p.m. we will have a party after that just to mention we have a, a new campaign that was just launched on November 16th my son's 15th anniversary it's a website www.coldcasecampaign.com please go there subscribe to the mailing list look at those faces those faces are all unsolved you you are invited to join that and put your loved ones photo on there if you want people to get a new fresh set of eyes on your loved ones cases okay because you're not forgotten. If the police can't do it because of whatever reasons, short staff what, believe, guess what, the people of, that are visiting that are going to see your loved one's face and that's going to spark some talk. Good talk. Be strong, mothers in Watsonville. Be strong. Okay? God bless you. Thank you. Nora Villa and I'm here because my son Aaron Lopez was murdered. It's funny to be two years, December 23rd. He was walking home at 6.20 in the afternoon and somebody walked up to him and shot him multiple times in the chest. He was such a loving, good-hearted kid, and oh God, I miss him so much. And I just want to send my love to all the mothers that have gone through the same thing. There's never a day that goes by that it doesn't seem like the first day when they knocked on my door to tell me that my son was murdered. I still wait for him to come in, to walk in that door and or text me and say, hey mom, where you at? Come pick me up, I need a ride. God, I wish that would be right this moment. But he's in my heart and he's always with us. And I have the support of my family, my daughters. We've all, we're all victims, not just Aaron. We've all, we all have the same hurt, the same pain. 
And when people say it's going to be okay and with time and heals, it's never going to be okay. I'm broken every day. And God gives me the strength to keep going for my son. And he, right now he would tell me, stop crying. <laughs> and these are tears for you, mijo, and, and I love you, and I miss you. <laughs> and it's okay. It's okay, baby. <sighs> and every day I see it as a day closer to my baby. Every day that I live, every day that he gives me the strength, God gives me the strength. And I just want to encourage you mothers to, <sighs> to never give up. Amen. And his murder hasn't been solved. And... I pray to God and I have faith in God that it will be someday. And to the person that did this to my son, I go every day looking at people's faces and not knowing if the person that smiled right next to me is the person that did this. And I forgive you. Wherever you are, if you're here today, I forgive you for what you've done. Not for you, but for me, for my family, for my son. And thank you for having me here, for hearing me. Um, God bless you all. Would any of the mothers like to come up? I don't want to know. I don't usually cry. Because <laughs> my son always said, don't cry for me when I'm gone. My son was murdered in Salinas. I have heard through the grapevine that it was a setup from his girlfriend. He didn't want to move out. So she had him moved out. They beat him up inside her car. They choked him. And they put him in the trunk of the car, of her car, and then burned the car. So the coroner's office guaranteed me that he was dead before he was burned. My son had real curly hair, so they kept checking all the black files of all the black people. And then they were finally, they finally got one finger that they could fingerprint. And it came out that it was my son. Now the police in Salinas were very mean to me when they called me to go and see the body. I said I didn't want to see the body. So the officer came and slapped the picture. I mean, actually slapped it on the table and said, well, is this your son? And he's dead. He was very rude. But till now they haven't found him. A mi hijo lo mataron en Salinas. Me lo ma voltearon, me lo, ma uh, me lo orcaron y luego me lo quemaron en la cajuela de su novia. Esto no está bien, pero yo la perdono. Yo solamente sé que fue ella nomás porque la gente habló. Es esto todo vino de la prisión. Mi hijo no estaba en pandilla. Uh, mi hijo no tenía ni un tatuaje, no traía ni unos aretes ni nada. Él era un muchacho normal. Pero muchas veces tiene que ver con quién nos juntamos. Eso es lo que tenemos que ver de los niños que nos quedan. Ver con quién se andan juntando. Yo en la casa no lloro. Yo ya no lloro por mi Joaquín. No sé por qué estoy llorando. Pero en la casa yo ya no lloro porque uh, yo sé que mi hijo está mucho más feliz de lo que estamos aquí. Ninguno de nosotros estamos tan feliz como él está allá con Diosito. Y, uh, yo platico con él todo el día, le prendo velas, bailo, bailo, ando bailando con su retrato y todo, pero um, aquí no sé por qué, 
Yo pienso que aquí está su presencia. I love you, Ruli. If there's any other mothers who would like to come up. Hi, everybody. Um, <laughs> watching everybody else go through this is bringing it all back for me. Um, I hope I can. I'm glad that I wrote some stuff because anyway so I said um, I said a prayer this morning before I wrote this and I asked God and I asked my son Dominic to help me to write it and to write what they think that you guys might want to hear or maybe even need to hear so I hope you'll excuse me if I read it rather than just go off because um, it's from them, it's not from me. Um, so, my son Dominic was murdered here in Watsonville in, um, on July 25th, 2012, so five years ago. Um, he wasn't a gang member, but he was an addict, and so he was involved in stuff that's dangerous, <laughs> as you guys can imagine. Um, he was shot in a shop that, um, that he had here. There was a young woman with him, and she was also shot, and she survived. And because of her, they, have, um, they were able to identify the person who killed him and, um, and injured her. And so he is in prison now for um, probably the rest of his life, unless the laws change, and you know that happens. So when Mary Lou asked me to share my story about the murder of Dominic, I wasn't sure which part would be most important. <laughs> That's why I asked him and God. I thought, you know, it's good to have their help. So I didn't know, should I talk about how my life will never be the same? Or how the death of my son has affected my family? Or how my husband and I have had to fight to hold our marriage together in spite of our grief? How hard is it to know what to say when people say, how many children do you have? The sadness that I carry because he will never be a father or me a grandmother to his children. Or how much I miss him. His wonderful energy, bright smile, funny sense of humor and the sound of his contagious laugh. The sound of his motorcycle and the big hugs that only he could give. All of these things and many more make up the new normal of my life. I first heard that phrase and also the one grief ambush when my husband Ken and I went to something called Grief Share. At first I was so angry because I knew that any nothing would ever be normal again. So when they said new normal, I was like, what are you talking about? You don't know. You haven't lost a child. I've come to know that if I choose to embrace it, I can still experience joy in my life at the same time, and I, at some level, am always sad. That's my new normal, because they're both true. I'm a changed person, and I'm just beginning to figure out who that person is now. We're actually starting a nonprofit here in Watsonville to help um, to help kids in the same place where our son was killed. So that'll be part of my new normal and hopefully part of the healing. Um, so a grief ambush describes the times, and you moms know what I'm talking about, when you hear a song, or you smell something, or you see a person, and anything else that reminds me of him and I'm totally overwhelmed with emotion because then reality hits and my heart realizes that hey he's not here anymore and I forget because I can pretend that he's still alive 
and that I'm still going to hear his voice or that he's still going to come. And even though all of these things are important, I think that the most important message that I'd like to share with you today is about forgiveness. And Nora mentioned it. Um, I know everyone here has either lost someone or has been hurt, deeply hurt by someone in their life. And we're lucky that the young man who killed our son was arrested so that we were able to speak with, to him at his sentencing. And I told him that by the grace of God, I forgave him. He didn't believe me, but he does now. Um, not for him, but for me and my family. And I was choosing not to hold on to the anger that would destroy me and everything around me. This person had already taken my son. I wasn't going to give him the rest of my life. I wasn't going to give him the joy that I have with my grandkids and the relationship I have with my husband and the satisfaction I have when I'm at work and I help people and I make a difference for them. He can't have that because that's mine. And I wasn't going to drink the poison and expect that he was going to die. The thing about forgiveness Sorry, my hand's shaking here. The thing about forgiveness that most people don't realize is that we do it not for the person who hurt us, but for ourselves. And it doesn't mean that we ever forget what they did. Forgive and forget is a lie. Don't ever believe it. It doesn't mean that we're saying that they, what they did is okay, or that we have to hide or deny our feelings about what happened. We don't ever have to see or speak to them again. They may even be dead. We, de we never have to have them or be in their presence again. It's something that we do in our hearts. And it's not dependent on the other person saying that they're sorry or them being sorry for what they did. Most of all, it's not easy. And it's not simple. And it's not automatic. So my hope is that each of you will not let the person who hurt you have control over you. That the anger and blame that you feel will not hold you hostage in your life. And that you will choose to reinforce your personal power, regain your well-being, and be able to feel the peace. It will help you to have physical, mental, and spiritual health. I wish each of you a good life where you'll be able to embrace the relationships with the people who are still here in your life and where you can experience joy in the midst of the pain that will always be part of your new normal. Thanks. Thank you. Any more mothers who have spoken and want to speak? Mamasis, can I If there's any more mothers or family members that would like to speak. Like I said, today is National Observance Day for victims of bike and pedestrian, uh, bike and pedestrian victims. And we have another recent one that happened not too long ago. Jenny Gervasio. Yeah, my name is uh, Richard Martinez. Um, I'm Jenny's uh, husband. We've been together like 38 years. Anyways, on, on September 11th, she was uh, struck by a car on Austin Drive in Main Street. My standards and reasons say that the car was uh, speeding, racing. That's a car was uh, speeding, racing. Um, anyways, it's still an ongoing investigation. Um, anyways, I just wanted to bring people's attention about how fast people drive on Main Street, the whole area, like from uh, all the way down from Big Five all the way up. Way up from Main Street, and just recently, um, another one got killed right here on Main Street, on the wheelchair across the street. And these things are happening while they're crossing on the crosswalk. Um, so hopefully they bring some change to all that. Yes. And um, anyway, Jane, Jane, Jane was a good person. I mean, she had a good heart, big heart. She's always trying to help people. I mean, we had ups and downs, and she was struggling too with her addiction and stuff. But 
She was doing good though. I mean, she had a big heart, and she didn't deserve to die the way she did. You know, bystanders. I uh, was saying that they were speeding, going fast. And I believe that to be true. You know, regardless of whatever it is, they're responsible for death. And it was way too soon. You know, she was 56 years old, and, and no way that she deserved to die that way. You know, the body, the um, with the cars, the impact did to her body is, you know, I don't even want to mention. You know, and um. They had to be going fast because the bike was cut in half everything, you know, if they're walking the bike across the street. So anyway, I want to pay the attention about <clears throat> the racing, the speeding on Main Street. You know, that's a big problem here. I know a lot of people got hit right here on the streets here. And that needs to become some change. Um, the one thing the police department said something, mentioned something about um, Jay's death when her name on um, due to her. They got the fine they needed to um, make the streets um, safer for um, pedestrians crossing. Um, if that's to be true, then hopefully maybe they could put some kind of memorial or monument for her, you know, where, where she got hit at. You know, I mean, just like a big rock structure with a name and some writing on it, you know. I don't think that would be too hard. Um, just recently we got some, um, I know it's about, we got to take that stuff down. You know, we got some flowers and stuff out. That, and I don't think that's, that's right, you know. There's a lot of people out here that had made one of those, you know, memorials and stuff, and they never told them to take it down, you know. So I don't understand why we got to take change down. So that's another issue that's going to be coming up. Um, anyway, I just wanted to say that, you know, she had a good heart, and she will never be forgotten, you know. And I hope that anybody has any information or anything that, you know, may have recorded that, that scene where it happened will come forward, you know, and let us know what's going on with that. Because like I said, it's still an ongoing investigation and nobody's been arrested yet. But everybody we talked to said they were racing, they were speeding. And um, the way the bike was kind of half, you know, there's no skin marks on the road, I'm pretty sure they had to be, you know. So anyways, um, thank you for your time. God bless you. If we would proceed, if there's any more mothers or dads or family, we're gonna we have a lot of speakers today, and uh, uh, we're gonna have um, any more mom before I go to the next step that would like to say something or dads or family. Uh, uh, we're gonna have a brother that's gonna say a prayer and open in prayer right now, and then uh, Luis Alejo is gonna speak, and then I want all the mothers to come over here, and I want everybody to hug all the mothers. We're gonna take a picture of the mothers, and I want each one of you guys to hug the mother for that loved one that they feel in their heart afterwards. So I'll have um, um, Luis or... Speak first or... Thank you. Thank you everyone. I'm uh, Monterey County Supervisor Luis Alejo. And first of all, I want you to join me in giving all these courageous mothers from Watson Salinas a round of applause, please, for their courage, for their strength, for never giving up hope. And I want to thank each and every one of you for coming. All the family members, friends, who have come here year after year. This is our 24th year. I come to every single Watsonville Peace and Unity March. And I want to thank all the people who made a commitment to work to make this year's possible again. I want to thank, uh, this is my mom. Let's give my mom a round of applause for really spearheading this year's event. She's done a good job. Thank you, mom, for your work. Um, Everybody, as was mentioned earlier, we started this march with a group of about 15 young people. And our first march was in August of 1994, and we did it in honor of the tragic deaths of Jessica, age 9, George Cortez, age 16. They were tragically killed on February 10th of that year, 1994. And I was 19 years old at the time, and we got together with these group of young people because he said the people who were being most impacted by violence, not only gang violence, but domestic violence, was a lot of young people. And we made a promise to ourselves that we're not gonna let our community forget their names, their faces, their ages. And like the mother was saying, I too, every now and then, I, I sit down by myself and I cry. I remember them. Because I, today I said, Jessica would probably be 32 years old today. George would be 39 years old. And I wonder, would they have their own families? Would they have their own business? Would she be a teacher? Would he be an engineer? What would they be doing today? I think of that every single day. 
And I know these mothers and these fathers and these relatives think the same. That's right. Every Thanksgiving, yeah. next week we're going to be sitting at the table, and every Thanksgiving these mothers are remembering what it would be like to have their son or their daughter right there sitting around the table having a good family time. During Christmas, during their birthdays, that hurts. But it's kind of nice to know that a community cares enough that they haven't forget each and every one of them. That's why we always ask people, bring their pictures, bring their ages. Don't let the community forget about them, and we have it. Right. And today, to see the mothers from Salinas and Watsonville yes. coming together, working together, I think that's a very powerful thing, yes. because it's not hard, it's not easy. When we did our first march, I was 19, so I went to talk to uh, Jessica Cortez's mom. She worked at a nursery here on Green Valley Road. And she came out of work, and I was going to invite her to come lead our first march. And I didn't know what to tell her. What, what do you tell, what does a 19-year-old kid tell a mother uh, about coming to a march and coming in front of everyone here and talking about their story. She came out, she said it was too hard for her. She declined that year because it is too hard. I can't talk, I start crying. Um, she declined, respectfully declined that year. But two years later, with the help of Rosa de Ramirez, a mother who's come to every single march and led this march uh, every single year, two years later she was there marching with us, leading the march. For me, I never forgot those stories of the courageous mothers who out of a, a major tragedy and a lot of pain, they use that to help save other people's lives and try to make a difference in this community. And so here we are 24 years later and we ask ourselves here in Watsonville, has it made a difference? And when you, this year, when you look back what's happening, Watsonville has a, is a 30 year low in violent crime. The numbers of homicides have decreased significantly. When we first started the march, the relationship between the police department here and the community wasn't the best, but now it's much closer. You have a police department who is more connected with the neighborhoods and with the community organizations, and they've been supporting this march for many years. So I want to say, all of you, we have made a difference. We are saving lives. And to all these mothers, I want to say, we haven't forgot them. Some of these mothers and fathers have fought for justice for their loved ones. And some of them, after 20 years sometimes, some to, after 25 years, finally the people responsible are being brought to justice. A story of never giving up hope, never giving up on their loved ones, and there's many other cold cases that deserve to be right. brought to justice as well. So we're with all these mothers. So I really want to thank you. Next year will be our 25th anniversary. I hope that you will all join us, bring more people, and that this march could keep going another 25 years, because it's that important. I want to thank you all for allowing me to come here, for supporting this event, and again, it's about saving lives, making a difference, and never forgetting the people that we love the most, our brothers and sisters. Muchas gracias, everyone. Thank you. Robbie's going to say a prayer, but I know the mothers are getting uh, uh, real hot from the sun there. If you wish to come over here and stand down for a while, and then we'll move your chairs right now where you have to be in the sun, mothers. Or somebody wants to help them move their chairs and they can sit in the shade so they get away from the sun because the sun is pretty strong. And we, maybe we can put them here. So everybody grabs a chair for one of the mothers and we can sit them right here. You know, or stand up and uh, or stand up and bring the chair over here. Okay, uh, because the mothers are getting the sun right there. And uh, okay, Robbie, and uh, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Good afternoon. My name is Robbie Olson. I'm the pastor of United Presbyterian Church and the police chaplain here in Watsonville. And I'd like to offer a prayer for the mothers, the families, and for our community. Would you please join me in prayer? We'll, we'll wait one moment. We'll wait the situation. Okay, uh, 
My name is Robbie Olson. I'm the pastor at United Presbyterian Church and our police chaplain here in town. And uh, we'd like to offer a prayer for the mothers, for the families, and for our community. Would you join me in prayer? Living God, we come to you in grief and in solidarity with mothers who have lost children far too early. We pray for the families who live with daily grief, remembering so clearly who was lost. Lord, we pray for the families of the perpetrators of these crimes, for the pain and shame that they feel. We pray that they would discover the forgiveness that we have heard about this very day. And Lord, as we look forward in this community, we pray for peace and for unity. We pray for a just and equitable society. We pray for a place where crime would be a thing of the past for safety for our youth. We pray for safety for our LGBTQ members. We pray for liberation from fear of ICE and for those who live in terror and feel they have no good choices. And Lord, we pray for an end to gang violence and that we as community members would find our opportunities to step up, to care for and to educate our youth that they would have better choices to be able to make. And now, as a people committed to peace and unity, though it may cost us, we pray that we would be a part of the end to violence, because violence only begets violence. May Watsonville be a sanctuary city not only for our immigrants, but a sanctuary from violence. We pray for transformation, for equity, for justice, for peace and unity, and through it all, may we be a community holding hands, standing together, holding each other up in love. We pray all of this to you, O oh God. Amen. Amen. Quick update, yeah. So the Gervasio family asked me, you know, they didn't want their their mother, their wife's passing to be in vain. So they asked me to mention that they have a petition to sign for community members here in Watsonville, for everyone to sign here in Watsonville, to make Main Street a safer bike and pedestrian friendly Main Street. So right here, yes. We, will, we have one mother that uh, actually want to speak. Uh, Senora? Uh, 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 we're going to go back to one mother here. She wants to say something. I'm going to talk to my son, who killed him in 1995. He was studying in San Jose. He was a good guy, very Todo el mundo lo quería, tenía tantos amigos, pero lo agarraron en un momento mal porque lo invitaron a, a que fuera a traer un pica porque él era estudió mecánico y había venido a, a mi casa a traer por sus papeles para irse a seguir estudiando secoya. Yo no sé quién fue la maldad que le hicieron a él, pero alguien se lo mandó a hacer porque le, tu, le pusieron una emboscada. Que, que, que su troca no tenía gasolina y llegaron al gasolín y ahí se dieron la vuelta a los malvados se tuvieron que hacer llorar si él era de verdad y como y todo y dieron la vuelta y le dieron en su corazón y mi hijo nomás vino la ambulancia y que la ambulancia 
se entiendo. Entonces, él dejó a su novia embarazada. Y para nosotros ha sido mucho dolor porque nació su hijo. Y él creció sin su padre, sin el amor de su padre. Y para todos nosotros ha sido un gran dolor porque él era mi único hijo, el más grande. Y para mí todavía ahorita yo recuerdo como si fuera ese momento porque tuvimos todos, toda la familia mucho dolor. Yo lo extraño tanto, lo quiero. Quisiera tenerlo conmigo para que vea todo lo que es su hijo, un gran hijo que tiene. Él se hubiera sentido tan orgulloso. Él ya es ingeniero, tiene su buen trabajo y está haciendo todo bien porque pienso que trae la herencia de su padre. Es lo único que él me dejó. Pero gracias a Dios, le doy muchas gracias a Dios que fue hombrecito y le doy muchas gracias a Dios que se parece todo a él y está representando a él en todo momento. A nosotros, para nosotros fue un gran dolor terrible que lo hayan matado sin, sin tener ni un motivo. Él era bueno, estudioso, mandaba en pandillas, no tenía tatuajes, no usaba drogas, no nada. Era mucho perfecto. Él iba a misa, era católico, él todo fue, bueno, todo lo recopilaba, todo lo bueno y lo dijo. El día de su sepelio, todo Guasomir le estuvo porque todo Guasomir lo adoraba porque era un bicho tan bueno. A todos les andaba dando consejos, que hicieran bien, a todos andaba ayudando, tenía tantos amigos. Todo el mundo, aquí en Guasomir, todo el mundo estuvo de luto cuando le pasó eso a mi hijo porque nadie creía que él estudiando en San José, haciendo él cosas buenas. Le, le fuera a pasar eso, alguien de, de maldad le fuera a quitar su vida y jovencito, iba a tener 21 años en ese mes, le arrebataron su vida, no, no cumplió, no alcanzó a cumplir sus 21 años, su esposa embarazada, tantos proyectos que tenía él por estudiar, seguir estudiando, ser alguien en la vida, él iba a hacer mucho por la vida. Le hicieron algo a una gran vida, de veras, de verdad. Y cada año, pues para mí, el 7 es terrible y es doloroso. Y, y sufre mucho. Miramos cómo la mamá sufre, hasta lo hacen llorar a veces. A veces me han hecho a mí llorar. You know, porque como una mamá siempre quiere mucho a sus hijos. Gracias, Ale, Alejo era su amigo, él lo conocía. ¿Graduaste de la escuela juntos? Yo estaba junto con él en la escuela. Yo gradué con Serrano Rentería, y fue en su honor también que empezamos esta marcha. Y fui a hablar con su mamá. His dad, uh, when he was still alive, and his sisters, and they'd be coming a year after year. I want to thank them. And this young man, he came as a young child. Now look, he's all grown up. But you can do it, brother. We're proud of you because yes. you keep memory of Serrano Renteria alive. Yes. Let's give him a round of applause. Yes. Model, model young person in our community. We're proud of you, brother. Like a, like a lot of mothers, you know, I know dads love their kids a lot too, you know. We all know that dads love their kids too, but, but uh, you know, mothers hurt, you know, mother hurt more, you know. For some reason, mothers always hurt when one of their child is taken away, you know. Um,
because I know, I don't know what would happen to me if one of my shows was taken away. If my, my little Louise or somebody was taken away, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. Only God knows. You know, I guess God gives you strength, you know, because uh, to see these mothers here and still, you can still see it on their heart. You can, you can feel it, you know, they're still hurting, no matter what, you know, they're still hurting, you know, but we're here for you, for all of you, to pray for all these moms, pray for all the moms, the son and, and the daughters that are out in the streets, sometimes they go to parties all by themselves, sometimes they go dancing, you don't know if they're going to come back, sometimes there's evil people out there, so every time your son or daughter goes and leaves the house, say a little prayer for her, say a little prayer for him, you know, that God may protect him, because sometimes the enemy is out there trying to find Find out who can he can destroy. So we're gonna go on with our speaker now. If, if um, Luis has anything more to say, we're gonna go on to the speaker. The White Hawks, White Hawks were gonna be dancing at this time, but they we moved because at two o'clock they were able to get everybody at two o'clock. So they're gonna do it at two o'clock. They're gonna be closing with a dance and they're gonna be leading the march around the park. Now some of you were told we were gonna have a big march, but. You know, lately, so many things have been happening on the sidewalk. People have been killed by the sidewalk, you know. You see them in the news. So the cops are making it more strict, you know. They were, they want more cars, more money. At this time, I, I didn't have the money to pay them, you know. You know, I said, oh, oh you know what, I'll settle. We'll settle for the park around the park, you know. So uh, uh, they're going to be leading the park. You're going to be marching with your with your band, if you got a band, with a, with a flyer, whatever you want to march with. Uh, we're going to do it around the park here, like, um, all around the park here after the Nansante State Corver. But right now we get, we're going to get to the speakers. There are speakers that are, are one of the first speakers going to be Danny Contreras from Brave Warriors. Is he here? Danny Contreras. Where's Danny? Don't worry around Danny. Come on, Danny. Have anybody seen Danny Contreras? Oh, okay. Okay, meanwhile, uh, is anybody representing Jorge well, Daddy? Uh, let's get somebody from PBPSA. Anybody from PBSA here? Speaker? Uh, that's part of prevention that works right here by East Lake. Erika Pavia actually helped me a lot. They put the application in and to pay the park, the insurance, you know. Uh, they did a lot of work, but I don't know if, if she was going to be able to come. But if there's somebody here to speak in behalf of Bahara Prevention, Bahara Valley Prevention, let me know. Because otherwise we'll go to the next speaker. Okay, we're going to have Danny. Uh, Danny has a birthday uh, boy, and he told me, Mary Lou, i got to be one of the first speakers because i got to go and do my party for my son. <laughs> okay, it's Danny. It's all yours. Hey, how is everybody doing? <laughs> so, um, this is my birthday son today. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! So, I just, I just came, I guess, to share a little bit about myself and um, kind of some things that we're doing right now in the community. Um, so, people who don't know, I have a history of gangs and drugs and violence. I went to prison at 17 years old for murder that I did not commit. Uh, I ended up doing 14 year sentence on that. I got released here to Watsonville in 2011 with nothing and I uh, had to put my life together. And it's been an awesome, an awesome, awesome journey. Um, so through that I've been giving back to the community as soon as I got out of prison, uh, talking at all the schools, putting people together, putting a group of friends together, Debbie, Rosa, Nora, uh, other people that have been involved in the community to uh, kind of go speak to the kids so they can see you know the effects and consequences of gangs and drugs and all that stuff um, right now currently we've had a group is Romero here today? so we have a, we have a group at a PVI where they haven't had where they haven't put kids that identify as northerners and other kids that identify as southerners in a group together so two years ago me and Romero put the kids in a circle and we began working with them and so um, I mean, we talk about a lot of different things, gangs, drugs, you know, family stuff that happens, forgiveness, being able to forgive people from trauma in their past and stuff like that. You know, I have Rosa come in all the time, Debbie, Nora, other people here that, that are in the crowd. Um, and it's just about trying to show them different options, you know, and, and different different ways of life. I mean, the first, I think the first group that we had 
all the school administration was standing outside the doors because they thought maybe there might be a fight, and it went good. You know, we got people shaking hands. Uh, we've took them to a prison, to Solidat Prison, one of the prisons I was at, and uh, they were able to, it's not a scared straight program, they're able to show them, you know, this is, this is how life is if you continue on this path, right? Um, we took them to Cabrillo College, San Jose State University, a bunch of different other things, some barbecues. Right now, all of them want jobs. And so, I guess my, my uh, request or call to action to everybody here is, you know, let, like, I can't do everything by myself. Romito can't do any, everything by himself. Gina can't do everything by herself. All of us can't do everything by ourselves, but together, if more of us start standing up, like, we can start making a difference in all our kids' lives. Like, I don't want my kids to get shot, you know? That's my boy. My other boy is right there. There's my other boy with my wife over there. You know, I, I want them to have a good life. Amen. I want this community to have a good life, you know? And I think, you know, we all we all need to stand up. Maybe some people are scared to stand out and uh, step away from stuff, but uh, it's time, man. There, I get so many phone calls from people's mothers that I, there's no way, I got a full-time job and I got a family, you know? My family was broken when I was a kid and I didn't have everybody there and I want to be there all the time that I can be for my family, but I also want to help out in the community too. But if there's more people standing up, then we can all do something good, man. We can we can make a big difference that nobody else can do like we can do, yeah. right? That's right? And so, Woo! I would just say we all need to stand up, right? And not just here. Like we need to tell our family, our friends, <laughs> my son. <laughs> You know, we all we all got to get up, man. We all got to start volunteering, mentoring, whatever whatever that looks like. We need to go out there and do that. There's so many kids that don't have dads, that come from broken families, right? And and they need some they need some positive male and female influence that are not on drugs, that are not trying to give them a joint, not trying to give them some beer, not trying to freaking get them involved in some games or tell them some stuff that's freaking just stupid, right? We need to tell them some some truth. Like you need to go to school because that's going to help you out, right? You need, you, need to, you need to listen to your mom and dad. You might not like what they're saying right now, but sh they love you and they're working hard to, to put some food on the table, put, some, put these clothes on you. You know, so I see some of the kids at the schools, they got Jordans and all this stuff. Like, man, your mom your mom worked hard for that or your dad worked hard for that. Like, don't just take that for granted, you know? And, and so we need everybody to stand up and we need everybody to get involved and to reach out, man. There's so many mothers that, that the, whatever, whatever happened, the divorce, baby dad's gone, whatever. Those kids need dads, some male positive role models, and they need a mentor. They need somebody to stand in there, stand in the gap, and just be there, man. And he, I've been, I've been asking a bunch of different other organizations if we can like get something together just for these kids to get a job, you know. But we, well, it's more than just a job. Like if we can get them to have these jobs where they're getting paid some money, and we have a, a whole team of male mentors, man, that'd be awesome. Like I could come in for a weekend, like I'm gonna sacrifice my weekend, and then maybe some uh, a couple other guys can sacrifice their weekend, or a couple other guys and girls or whatever. You know, if we can get something going like that, man, we can we can make a difference right here in Watsonville. We and I think that can that can not only affect here, I think that can be a ripple effect all the way to Salinas, all the way to San Jose, all around the surrounding communities. Yeah, I think we can make that difference. <laughs> and my birthday boy is falling asleep again. <laughs> Anyways, I, I just want to thank you guys for your time, um, and just, you know, the, if nothing else, let's step it up, man. Let's step it up, let's get involved, get everybody that you can get involved, because that's what we need, right? And I, I want to thank all the mothers, because you guys are awesome, you know? You guys are awesome. You guys don't have to keep coming out, and I know it, and there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of hurt, there's a lot of trauma. And it sucks, and there's fear sometimes that people are not going to listen to you, or they're going to be retaliation. But thank you for coming out because you guys are keys to making a difference in this community too. Thank you. Okay. I, I want, I'm going to call one more time the Pajaro Valley Prevention. Uh, is there anybody here for a speaker? Let me know. Otherwise, we'll go to Action uh, Community Action Board, and I think uh, uh, Jenny's uh, a speaker for them. Jenny. <laughs> Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Muchísimas gracias por invitarnos a ser parte de este evento. Thank you very much for allowing us to be part of this event. 
I've been at this event several times as a participant and it does take all of us to step up and give that support to our young people, to the parents who have lost someone to violence, and also to the parents whose children were the reason why somebody lost a life. So we're all in this together. Estamos todos juntos, sea la persona que, la familia que perdió a su hijo o su hija la violencia, o, o sea la familia del joven que actuó y causó la muerte de otra persona. So what I would like to, sh to share just a little bit about is I'm working for CAB, Community Action Board, and I'm very, I feel very fortunate to be part of the team because my whole entire life I've been involved in prevention, in working with young people to make sure that they have all the opportunities, they take advantage of the opportunities that are brought to them. Sometimes they don't see it, sometimes families are not able to get them. But this is something that's going on also here in Watsonville. Community Action Board has several programs that work with young people to make sure that they get that mentor that they get somebody who's going to be next to them to help them re-enroll in school, to be able to get those credits, to be able to get that job, to be able to get the counseling services, to be able to get the substance abuse treatment that they need. But then there's also another big program that we don't think about much is the re-entry people. People who have been in jail, who have been in prison, who have committed a crime and are back in the community and they can't get a job because they have a long history of criminal activity. So what about them? Those are the, the fathers and the mothers that c come back in the community that can't support their children. So we need to also support those, give people a second chance. And so that's what CAB is doing. We have a re-entry program that helps these people. And they're all, you know, over 21 to 55, 60 years old who've been out of the community for a very long time. We have so many people here who work for CAB who take that extra step to help them get a resume ready, to help them go shopping to buy some clothes, to help them uh, practice how to interview, to drive them to go get an application to, to, the, to the interview. Son cosas que todos no, muchas personas que trabajan tienen ya esos, pueden hacer todas esas cosas por sí mismos. Pero personas que han estado en la prisión o en la cárcel por más de, de cinco años, 15, 20 años, necesitan bastante ayuda. Esos son los padres o las madres de los hijos que nosotros queremos que tengan el apoyo de su familia. Tenemos que todos apoyar a los jóvenes y apoyar a las familias, no solamente a los niños, sino a la familia, porque una familia fuerte también tiene hijo, hijos fuertes. So, I'd just like to close. Cab is right in that building back there. Please come by. We'll work with you. If you have a young person who needs some guidance, have them come. We have an excellent team, and I think the team's back there. If you can raise your hand, cab team somewhere. I saw them all. There they are. <laughs> So they'll work with young people and also with re-entry people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judy. Uh, and now we go to the next speaker, uh, Barrios Unidos, uh, Nene Alejandro had, I don't know if he was able, he was able to be here to, with us today, but he was gonna see his speaker, uh, uh, Robert Solis. Is he here? Robert's here, he stepped away for a minute, he's gonna be right back. Okay, I'll go to the next speaker, meanwhile. Okay, meanwhile, he comes back. We're gonna go to the next speaker, which is uh, YWCA, Leticia Mendoza. 
All these people work with the community. That's why I have them speak on what they do. Buenas tardes a Leticia Mendoza. Eh, primero que nada quiero darles las gracias porque su fuerza nos alimenta para seguir dando el trabajo que estamos haciendo. So first of all, I want to thank the moms that were here for sharing their story because your strength gives us a strength to to continue with the work that we do. And this is difficult because um, I came to Watsonville in 1974, 1975 when my best friends got stopped, um, she got killed. So it is hard to remember those things. And um, it's, it helps, at least help, I know it helps me um, get the strength to continue to do the work that we do. We are working with teens. Danny has been a speaker uh, with the middle schools. We want to start when they're young. So uh, we're at Pajaro, Lakeview, E.A. Hall, and so we're precisely talking about these issues. And we're working with the girls, because uh, we know when we have strong girls, we have strong women, strong families, and strong communities. So um, we also have a preschool, and um, we focus on the little ones. And thank you for inviting me. Um, it is an, a reminder, and again, your strength helps us build a strength. Thank you very much. Le Leticia Mendoza has been doing her job as a director for the YWCA's for a long time, and I'm pleased that she's here because she does a lot of work. Uh, now we're going to get back to Barrio Sonido. I don't know if Robert's here by now, or else we go to the next speaker. Is no? Okay, we're going to have somebody. Oh, okay, Robert. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, Robert worked with Barrio Sonidos. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon, everybody. It's good to see everybody. What a turnout. Um, well, uh, Dana always sends me on these special assignments last minute. Uh, but I just uh, I just want to say prayers for him, too, you know, because he's on his way to go see his grandson in, in uh, uh, Pinta with uh, Simmons Valley. That's where his uh, his son's doing for his grandson's doing 14 years. Um, so so Spider Unidos has been around since 1977. Um, my mentor, my director, Nan Alejandres, um, very wonderful dude. <laughs> um, I don't know where to begin on how that man finds his peace. Um, so we're a grassroots organization. Um, we like working with youth. Um, I also work with Danny and Ramiro at PV, um, trying to bring in blessings to our kids. Because just like uh, he said, you know, they're being misguided and there's no fathers, there's no role models. Um, I never had a good role model, but you know, somewhere down the line I found something. Um, we're in Santa Cruz High. Uh, we have three, day, three days a week, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays there. Um, with Latino Student Union. Uh, Nane also does uh, prison work in Soledad State Prison. I don't know too much about the trans communality program that he got going, but it works. Uh, I've been to Soledad State Prison to visit the men too, and it's just the little bit of love that we can bring in to season them, it's just, it's a blessing, and it feels so good to be a part of that, because I didn't realize I'd be doing something like this. Um, I've been working with Barrios for five years, and it's it's a great blessing. We we do the we do the mezcal. That's how we get out of our dungeons of darkness. Um, that's how I'm getting out. Uh, and we just try to sweat, you know, um, the old Native American way. Um, we're also in juvenile hall. Um, we're in the streets, um, and we're part of the community. Uh, just like Danny said, man, uh, we can't we can't make we can't do this alone. It takes a village, and that's the best part of all this is being able to reach out and see all these beautiful people here. Uh, shout out to UCSC that came out and supported us. Um, all the community uh, Revolunas. Uh, we got uh, we got some music for you this afternoon coming up. Si se puede. Thank you for all your help. Uh, they they showed up early this morning. Uh, we were all here setting up. Um, it's just a beautiful blessing. Uh, thank you, Marilu, for stepping up. You know, she stepped up with, with, with impact, and that's that's what it takes. You know, how do people get involved? She did it right here. You know, it, 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 it just takes a few phone calls, and, and we made this happen. 
And um, yeah, and thank you, Luis. Thank you, Felipe. Um, everybody else, the Brown Berets. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we're gonna go to the next speaker. So I know that uh, we had somebody from Barrio Sonido. Do we have somebody from Barrio Sonido say something? Now? Oh, that was me. That was me. Oh, wait a minute. Si se puede. I mean to say, I'm sorry. Si se puede. Is there somebody from Si se puede here? Is a speaker? Okay, I don't, I don't hear, but let me know if there. Meanwhile, we're gonna go to the next, and we're gonna go to Reverend Lunas. I would like them all to come together, you know, the group as a group, and say something about what they do in this community to promote peace and unity. Uh, Reverend Lunas. No clap for these girls. They work together. You know, for the betterment of uh, Watsonville, awesome. Who will be the speaker? Okay. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good, good, good. So first and foremost, uh, we are the Revolunas. But before we go into that, we want to thank you all for being here. Um, this is our community. Okay, we chances are all of us are born and raised here in this community. Myself, as well as all the Revolunas, we have known someone that either has been impacted by violence or ourselves have been through some type of violence. And so when we think of violence, we just think that it's one another. You know, it's person to person. But it's also palabras. It's also words, the words that we use. It's also violence to Mother Earth. Without Mother Earth, we can't be here. And we're all connected to that. Um, who we are, we are a strong Chigonos group here in Watsonville. We are dedicated to empower, to protect, to educate our community. We are a resource, especially for our young women. Young women go through violence too. You know, as much as there's a needed circle for our young men, our young women, you are visible, we see you. You are important to us. The mothers, thank you for being here. I understand it doesn't get easy every single year. It gets harder and harder as the birthdays come up, as the holidays come up. I've worked with Aaron myself. I know that young man, and he was a terrific young man that deserves to be here. But his spirit is here because you are here, so thank you for that. It's an honor to, to look at everyone and, and to be together in community. But however, it takes more than just prayers. It takes more than just getting together one time a year, putting up the altars, saying people's names, and then we go on our daily lives. Unfortunately, I'd be lying if I said that there would be no more names added to this list. No more pictures added to that beautiful poster that was provided, so thank you for that. We need community. We need to reach out to our youth. You know, we heard earlier that there's a really strong connection with the Watson Police Department and the community. That's maybe like 5% true. And I can say that, we can say that is because we work with the youth in the community. When something happens in the community, the youth are not talking to the police. The youth are not talking to anybody. They hold it in. And what happens? They let it out. They let it out on someone else. And then we have another name that's on this paper, another face that's on this banner. We need careers. We need job opportunities for our young people. As Danny was saying earlier, we need a, a young a men's circle as well as a young lady circle with positive mentors. Because the youth know. The youth know whether you're just faking it or not. They see that. The youth, how many times do we get checked by youth? All the time, right? All the time. They will check us. They will ask about us. I, I worked with your son, and he would ask me all the time, Amy, where are you from? Who are you? What are you about? How can you help me? But the, but the real question is, like, hey, yeah, you're right. How can we help you as a community? How can we help you together? But how do we heal? Because we talk about our traumas. We talk about how, you know, our, our brothers and sisters were lost. But yet we don't talk about how we are healing. Because when one hurts, we all hurt. But when one heals, we all heal. 
And that's something we gotta remember. That's something that's so sacred and so blessed. And that's what the Revalunas are about. The Revalunas are, are, are what's going on now here in town. Uh, you know, whew, I can't I can't say enough, so I'm gonna pass the mic. But thank you for all for being here. And again, it takes more than just prayers and just to show up one time out of the year because the mothers are still hurting every single day. The daughters, the daughters are still hurting every day. Carolyn, I see you and your granddaughter, your great grandson. I see that. I know what it's like not to have my dad for violence that he caused to himself. So remember, violence is just not, a, you know, a gunshot, a stab. It's mentally, it's physically, it's emotionally. And that's something that we all have to heal from. So I'm going to pass it to the hermana. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, moms. And thanks to all the organizers. And may y'all rest in heaven. I'm part of this awesome group, Revolunas. But I feel some way, somehow, that... We were put together because the need that this community has. I've been living in this community for 45 years plus. It's an honor to say that I've been moved to build a community magazine. It's called Ola Watsonville. Should be released in January. We think we have what it takes to do a women's march here in town. So if you're interested, please come and let us know because together we help build a better community. This community magazine is going to provide information like prevention because I feel that prevention is the key. And it starts at home, definitely. So there's so much more to say, but I just want to say thank you so much again to the moms for coming out here. Le quiero dar las gracias a todas las mamás que es imposible alguna forma venir acá y decir sus historias porque somos una comunidad. Estoy haciendo una revista comunitaria, pero eso viene porque la fuerza del universo está alineando eso y la llave es prevención. So, todas nosotras nos reunimos no nomás porque nos reunimos así físicamente, pero es uh, creo que algo más grande para todos juntos, ustedes, los niños, nosotras, trabajar juntos para hacer una mejor comunidad. Esta revista viene en enero y nos gustaría uh, y creo que es posible hacer una marcha masiva de mujeres, especialmente, pero todos, todos, niños, papás, todos. So, muchas gracias y gracias a Revolunas que me aceptan en su espacio y a todos ustedes y juntos si sí se puede. Thank you Revolunas for your speech. Uh, así que le damos gracias también a... Vamos a pasar a seguir, pero tenemos una speaker de la Watsonville Senior Center, Valerie. Uh, she's here. Valerie uh, Rivera. I saw her. Valerie Rivera, is she here from the seniors? Okay, I don't know, maybe she had to leave, but I can speak a little bit on the senior because I'm a member of the seniors also. But uh, I just want to tell you that there's a lot of seniors here sitting and standing around here who actually did all the burritos you guys ate this morning. So there were seven seniors, lots of those seniors. They prepared, they made those burritos for you. So we're going to give them a clap because uh, they they made it and that's what you ate this morning. Okay, we're going to go to the next one here. Um, Pajaro Valley Federal Teachers, Francisco Rodriguez. You see here? Federation of Teachers. See, I know I saw him here earlier. But since he's, are you a federal teacher also? <laughs> Okay, well, uh, we're going to let her speak. Since he's not here, he must have left. You know, people have to leave sometimes. I'm going to let Karen speak and be him. Because she want to say something, so I'm going to let her have her chance. Hi, I'm Karen Osmondson. Soy miembro de la mesa directiva de las escuelas. Y, bueno, no quiero... Yo quiero decirles cosas que son... Es, que son positivo sobre nuestras escuelas. Um, for example, we've been able to lower our expulsions and our suspensions rate by over 60%. And if you know, 
Yeah, if you know what that means, it means that if, if we're having lots of students being expelled and, and suspended, it means that they're dropping out of school and they're going into the prisons, right? That's what happens with expelled and suspended students. They end up in prisons. So um, it's really important to make a difference that way. We've also been uh, really making a difference with, um, it's called PBA, PBIS, it's Positive Behavior Intervention. And we're doing it in, now in all of the schools so we can work with students to figure out ways that um, instead of punishing them, we can work with them. We can make them feel better about what they're doing. They make them feel better about their school, um, their schools. They can make better about their academic success. Um, so that's another positive thing that's happening within our school districts that will help in terms of violence as well. <laughs> Okay, entonces, pudiera decirles de que este, tenemos cosas positivas que están uh, sucediendo en nuestras escuelas. Um, hemos podido um, bajar las suspensiones y expulsiones por 60%. Es bastante, hemos podido. Tú sabes de que um, los niños cuando tienen que recibir la expulsión o suspensión, ellos por fin no, no van a la escuela, terminan de ir a la escuela y por fin um, están en muchas veces las prisiones. Están en las prisiones porque no, no se sienten bien de ir a la escuela, no se sienten bien de estar en la sociedad, se puede decir. Um, estamos haciendo muy bien porque tenemos un programa para ayudar um, a los niños que se llama PBIS que es disciplina positiva en vez de, 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 de hacer cosas en contra de los niños estamos haciendo cosas a favor de ellos para que sean mejor académica y, 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 y uh, social y emocional gracias okay. muchas gracias Karen por lo que dijiste ok me dijeron que Francisco Rodríguez estaba por ahí está si no, vamos a seguir al siguiente speaker. Ok, there we go. Francisco es un miembro de la Unión de Maestros. Si sí, defiende a las maestras, son los que trabajan con nuestros hijos. Buenas tardes. Este, no hay una conversación más dura que la conversación entre un maestro y sus alumnos cuando uno de ellos acaba de, acaba de fallecer. Especialmente cuando ese fallecimiento es debido a un acto de violencia la Federación de Maestros del Valle del Pájaro comprende el dolor que sufre la comunidad cuando hay un caso como estos y no es solamente uno sino ya muchos por muchos años y estamos aquí como maestros, como facultad para apoyarles y brindarles todo lo que podamos y en cambio les pidemos a ustedes su participación en la vida escolar de sus alumnos y también que presionen a sus a personas electas para que den los recursos necesarios a las escuelas para poder tener un futuro más brillante para todos nuestros hijos. Gracias. Muchas gracias Francisco. Ok, vamos a seguir con el siguiente speaker. Somos LGBT. Ana Yum Rivera, él va a hablar. Ok, digas también tiene que hablar sobre la protección de los jóvenes. Thank you. Um, I want to first of all thank um, Mary Lou for inviting me and inviting the organization that I represent. Like Mary Lou said, I am Naum Rivera and I'm the vice president of Somos LGBT. And we work um, specifically with the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community. And beyond that, what we do is we work against violence, violence against members of our community, but more specifically against violence against everyone. Because when one person is affected by violence, everyone is affected by violence. Um, and when we hurt, everyone hurts. And as uh, the previous speak, as one of the previous speakers said so eloquently, that when one person heals, that we all heal. Um, I am. I, I woke up this morning um, 
being incredibly thankful that I get to celebrate another day of life and another year of existence in this world. And um, I am incredibly honored that on another day and another year of my life that I get to be here and I get to be surrounded by so many beautiful people um, and I get to be around so many wonderful mothers and that it reminds me that I myself, um, especially today, the day that she gave birth to me, that I need to go and I need to call my mother, I need to thank her, I need to say I love you and what a beautiful privilege it is that you took care of me when things got hard um, and was there for all of the beautiful celebrations in my life and in all of our lives. So we at Somos are here to help not just members of the LGBT community, but also everyone because we feel that we should be a community that is together, that is united and that needs and should prosper. So thank you so much for allowing me to speak. Thank you for, to the mothers. Um, I cannot imagine the pain that you all have um, in you, um, but I can definitely say that um, it is always good for me at least, um, and, I, and, and maybe for others to see you, because you are the personification of strength and power and it and it is always the moms and it is always the women and so I am blessed to be surrounded by such beautiful amazing power um, in front of me so thank you so much and um, si se puede um, uh, we have a, a couple of more speakers. Remember that our White House is going to be doing the dance at 2 o'clock, which is almost. But right now I have a young man. Uh, there's about two or three more speakers that I want him to come forward. Jorge Flores, he's going to say, es un poeta que dice poemas. And he's going to come over and say, uh, all to all the mothers here, va a dedicar su poema, porque es un poeta. Habla muchas palabras muy bonitas. Muchas gracias. Un honor realmente estar enfrente de todos ustedes el día de hoy. Um, también uh, me gustó mucho lo que tuvo que decir la compañera Amy. Uh, creo que una de las cosas que hay que realmente hacer es reconocer nuestros privilegios, reconocer las razones de por qué pasan las cosas, reconocer dónde viene toda esta violencia. Y esto no es cosa que vino desde, desde un pequeño problema. Todo esto viene desde hace 500 años y más. Entonces esto no empezó solamente el día de ayer y no se va, lamentablemente no se va este, a arreglar con unas leyes, no se va a arreglar con unos votos, no se va a arreglar con una organización, no se va a arreglar con, una, con, un, con, un, con unas palabras. Se va a arreglar cuando podamos nosotros reconocernos como hermanos y hermanas y poder vivir en este mundo. Y eso va no solamente para nosotros como este, uh, la cultura mexicoamericana, la mixteca, la itlantaca, sino para todos nuestros hermanos y hermanas de la cultura filipina, los japoneses, los chinos, a los americanos, los anglosajones. Tiene que realmente haber una unión dentro de todos nosotros para poder dejar de tener estos mismos problemas que hemos tenido más de 500 años ya. Todos vienen después de todo eso. Y claro, entre ellos se encuentra una de las más importantes, que es el, patriot, el, el, el patriarcal, ¿no? En los privilegios de los cuales venimos naciendo los hombres, pero que vienen también y que vino también desde hace 500 años. Y eso es lo que nos hace a nosotros, los hombres, muchos daños. Como lo dijo el compañero Daniel por allá, lo escuché, y muchísimas gracias por las palabras. Y por eso mismo saqué un poema que dice algo así. Déjame llorar para yo sanar, dicen no deben llorar los hombres Lo dicen personas que no saben lo que es ser un hombre Nacer, aparentar, aprender a calmar los ojos No dejar entrar oxígeno tampoco Y saber exhalar poco a poco no dejar que suene grave el esófago y por lógico creas que un hombre lo debe de saber todo creer que tienes que ganarle a la competencia y si no, muerto ser cabrón o tienes huevos eres una vieja 
Y a la bestia el dolor me los trajo con cerveza O cualquier cosa que apendeja Por no darle frente a lo que más pesa Muestra fuerza y no la delicadeza Todo por la pinche feria a la bestia el amor, el amor te mata, la más falsa promesa, pisar a los demás, bajar el autoestima, sentir subir para arriba, creer que eres el que chinga. Entonces no me digas, no me importa lo que pienses tú de mí, si sí, creo que lo femenino está en mí, esto no va por ti, sino por los que faltan por venir. Conocer a la mujer que llevas dentro No hay revolución sin la mujer Hay que reconocerlo Soy un macho todavía Hay daños de los cuales no me recupero Me los curo con poesía Dejando lágrimas en líneas Déjenme si estoy llorando Ni un consuelo estoy buscando Lágrimas de mis ancestros estoy soltando Lágrimas de mis ancestros estoy soltando Déjame llorar para no volver a empezar donde mismo Ese ciclo negativo Hay positivos, el mismo lío, pero diferente ¿A quién le importa lo que diga la gente? Que no diga nada que no alimente También me hice fuerte, no escuché al corazón Sé lo que es matar por rencor Oh por Dios, dile a Dios que la diosa aturdió a ti no al corazón Se encontró el infierno Ahora escribe sus pecados en un cuaderno Ahora solo siente lo escucha, es con agua fría la ducha en el día bien trucha. Muchos se encapuchan a mucha lucha, empuchen una imagen que se despelucha. Como cuando niño, también solo un niño pendejo que no sabía lo que hacía porque no tenía el ejemplo. El ejemplo de un padre que nunca estuvo ahí porque trabajaba en el campo. Agachado, agachado, pescando la presa, pescando la moral, la lechuga y todas esas cosas que nos mantienen en vida. Todas las verduras que nos llegan a la cocina para poder mantenernos en vida. Ahí está mi my padre y está mi madre hoy en día todavía. ¿Lo puedes creer? ¡Es todavía! Todavía. Y se preguntan que por qué salgo en la calle a buscar diversión Porque no encuentro nada en esta institución que llaman escuela Donde dicen que debo desarrollarme para ser solamente un empleado En serio, quieren que sea un empleado Cuando tengo sueños de ir más allá de las estrellas Poder conquistar, no, poder conquistarme a mí, sí Porque quiero poder superarme y expresarme todo lo que yo a veces siento Pero en este mundo dicen que no debe de ser así Dicen que no debe de ser así porque las emociones causan daño a otras personas que no lo pueden tomarlo. Dicen, las emociones causan daño a otras personas que no pueden tomarlo. Y se preguntan yo, como siendo solamente un joven, me quedo callado. Escúchame, me dicen a mí como un joven, yo me quedo callado. Porque cada vez que hablo de lo que siento, de mí, se están burlando. Dicen que quieren cuidarme solamente a mí, pero ¿qué está pasando? Cuando miro a mi madre comiendo cosas que no debería comer, pero ella no sabe porque a ella nadie tampoco le enseñó y yo no estoy ahí para decirle quién es el culpable de lo que está pasando. Todo esto es por diseño y claro que hay que personas que no lo entienden. Está bien porque yo tampoco lo entendía, yo también soy ignorante, yo no tengo los problemas, yo no tengo las respuestas a lo que está pasando todo el día. Pero lo que sí quiero decirles es de que no es de él ni de ella, es de nosotros. En esta unión nos encontramos todos. Gracias. Una última y nos vamos y dice así. Antes que nada, respeto a quien se lo merece. Y aquí no se le insulta, se le refortalece. Pese a quien le pese, aquí se sé que creces. A pesar de las bajas, luchar, marcar territorio como un animal. ¿Por qué será que se admira una era contraria a la nuestra? Raperos pendando películas del 90 2018 fue mi esta si se cuenta Sin papeles por papeles para pagar la renta Con el tiempo de tu vida Para pagar por tu tiempo de vida No es mentira lo oscuro de la verdad Miraron más real que sentir Al expresar experiencias lo que es compartir Y nos dicen que la vida así es, pero la verdad es que no les creemos Ya tenemos rato conociendo el terreno No estamos porque podemos, estamos porque es nuestro De nuestra vida por dignidad retomemos el puesto Muchísimas gracias, es todo Ok Okay, can we just, uh, uh, could you just wait for a minute so I can have the brum braids and then I'll pass it on to you. Uh, 
Anybody from the Brahma race wants to say something? I think uh, Paula Hernandez was going to say something. She's not here, so okay. she wasn't able to make it. Okay. You can say something. I can? Okay. All right. Well, I guess I'm filling in. Um, <laughs> Yikes. Hello, everybody. My name is Leah. I'm a member of the Watsonville Brown Berets. Um, there's several of us here today. You guys will see us wearing our black t-shirts and all that. I wanted to thank you to all the mothers and all the grandmothers and the sisters and the brothers and the fathers that are out here today. Um, you know, our deepest condolences go with you each and every day, and we always remember you. 24 years is a long time to be doing this. 24 years is a long time to have street violence, and it's been going on before then. Um, you know, I was reading not too long ago about a study that was done with uh, the word PTSD, and they asked people, what do you think of when we say the word PTSD? And immediately most of the responses were, oh, combat veterans. That's what warriors, you know, people that go to war come home with. And I said, no, that's, you know, that's not right. And the study went further, and they went and they looked into our elementary schools, and they found that elementary school students suffer more from PTSD symptoms than soldiers returning home from war. That's not right. That's not how our children should be raised. They shouldn't be raised to be afraid. They should be raised in love with our best intentions. And all these faces that you see up here, all these faces, no matter if they were adults or if they were younger, all these mothers and grandmothers still see them as little babies. They still see them in their arms. Exactly. That's how they remember them each and every day. So we have to remember that what we do as a community is for these faces that have gone. It's for these faces that are sitting here. We must always remember to strive harder for what we're doing for our community. And like Danny said, and like the Rebeluna said, we need to build positive spaces for our young men and our young women. When we lose, uh, you know, when a child loses a father figure or a mother figure, there needs somebody to be willing to step up in that place because that's important. It doesn't matter if you're the grandmother, if you're the aunt, or if you're just somebody in the community, a neighbor, anybody needs to step up because those children, they get lost. And that's how the streets take them is when they get lost. So we want to make sure that we're remembering them, not like everybody else said, not just one day a year, every single day of the year, because these mothers hurt doesn't stop. It never stops. So our mission as the Watsonville Brown Braves won't ever stop, and I know the mission of all the other organizations, it won't stop either. We're always here for you guys, each and every day for the next 24, 48, 100, 150 years, whatever it's going to take. We'll always be here as a community, and we're going to get stronger over the years. And we're going to watch those numbers go down. We're going to watch that street violence go down. Because each generation that comes, we're going to teach them how to love and how to go to their families when they need help and how to reach out into the communities. And so hopefully, as the years pass, more lives will stay home with their families instead of being lost. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You did very good. Um, I'm just going to call on uh, the Aztec. I don't know if Gina Castaneda is here. She was going to be here. Gina Castaneda. Uh, you know, I know sometimes they have to leave because they got things they got to do. But she said she was willing uh, to be here. But, you know, sometimes we go a little late on um, on our schedule, but it's okay. We'll go on to the next speaker here. I mean, to our, our point. Uh, he's going to say it right now. I'll let you have your turn here. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Uh, hello everybody, um, I go by the name of Nexus, it's my MC alias, my name is Carlos. Oh, nice to meet you, man. Uh, I'm going to share some poetry with y'all. Um, I do a lot of collaborations with my friend Jorge, who just came and shared some words with y'all today. Um, I'm going to do something both in English and in Spanish, uh, with some things that I feel are kind of relevant to what um, the occasion is for the day. And once again, uh, May the memory live on of all these young men who lost their lives to violence, uh, whether it was from gang violence or from the police or any other institution that perpetuates violence in any way. All right, I guess I'm going a cappella with this. No vengo para ser militar porque tengo la opción para rehabilitar la planeta, una ciudad, hasta mi comunidad, con gente unida, consciente de la dignidad de la humanidad, sin escándalos que les gusta provocar sobre la sociedad, haciéndonos pelear, sin buscarnos la manera para improvisar nuestra situación social, es todo mal, pero esta visión no se acaba como el mar, más allá que religiones te permiten a pensar, estudio con dignidad mi historia cultural, porque me ayuda a encontrar mi lado espiritual para mí en estos tiempos es una necesidad como el sol la luna y la luz que nos dan nexo la claridad dentro de la oscuridad 
volviéndome loco con la buscando la verdad, pero perdiéndome el poco cuando me pongo a pensar. <laughs> Alright, that was the first one, that was the first one. Um, thank you very much. Let's do my Spanish sometimes, but let's give it another go. <laughs> Enterrado en la basura de mi vida, segregado y masacrado por la esquina en una ciudad con varias cocinas pero puros muertos de hambre, sin su propina ojalá se encuentran con todo lo que se imaginan como fantasmas que se animan a estorbar todos los que viven cerca arriba, crucifico el micrófono como el hijo de Dios, autónomo con la manera que uso mi voz, autónomo como su comandante Marcos, no niego que te enseño la luz, me dicen dos, soy como las cabezas sonrecas en Veracruz tan viejas que no te imaginas la gratitud porque la única identidad es un espíritu la única identidad es un solo espíritu la única identidad es un espíritu gracias <laughs> right, um, we'll switch over to English right quick for you English speakers out there <clears throat> Yo, I got that mind shattered, man, mind pattern, man, I touch the dead end before conservatives get mad again, give it to you all, no preservatives or additives, man, clever when it comes with verbs and adjectives, put together bars and observe like a detective, Seven my times with the hurt and start projected like a ball from a jaguar in Mexico, majestic, map the stars as a destiny professed it, bars are connected to the universe, the nexus, more effective than these political perspectives, saying fuck your egotistical incentives, there's more out there besides capital ethics the way this game is played is skeptical and epic i can vividly explain how everything's deceptive living in a time where hypnotism is expected that's why donald trump's stupid ass when he got elected that's why donald trump's stupid ass when he got elected thank you very much that's all i have for you it's always uh, so great to see youth, you know, participate in the uh, community activity. You know, whether they do whatever whatever they do, but if it's for the community, it's great, you know. I love it. I love uh, when youth are participating. Uh, we're going to go to the next one. On, uh, it's a was I don't know if Wasson the Police Department is here. They were supposed to say something about Paul, the P-A-L, Paul. Is anybody from Watsonville com uh, uh, Police Department here? I haven't seen a police officer. They told me it was seen him. Uh, but I haven't seen a police officer yet. Milagro, milagro. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, maybe he'll, come, he'll drop by later, but I hope he drops by before the, the dancers uh, start dancing. I'm going to go to Monocar service. I know Marisol, uh, Marisol Lopez was going to be the speaker, but she really didn't want to speak. She was one uh, a family of the victims. Of, of crimes, you know, her family lost a uh, brother, and she was going to speak for a monocar service. I don't know if she's here, you know, but uh, she told me she might not be able to speak after all. But uh, she wanted to participate, and may God bless her and her family because they also were victims of crime. And she's not here today, but I'm going to go to the next one. Uh, Victory and Rich, uh, they said they were going to be here later because they have church service. But Gary Bones, well, has always been a supporter of the PC Unity March. Maybe he'll be coming a little later on, you know, but uh, I know that the White Hawks are here ready to do the dance. Uh, going back uh, to um, uh, that brown, no, the Si Se Puede. Si Se Puede, uh, they brought the bread, but I don't know if Cody was able to come. But that's okay because they brought the bread and they participated. I see Rebecca Garcia here, and I would like her to say something. She's a, a councilwoman. So there's enough time, Rebecca. Would you like to say something, Rebecca? <laughs> Is there any other city official here that maybe they could say a few words? You know, uh, city officials? Since we don't have the police department here, uh, we're going to pass it on to Rebecca because she's a Watsonville official. I'm a native of Watsonville. I was born and raised here. And so over the years, I have seen uh, many wonderful things that happen in our city and some tragedies that happen in our city. And it's uh, not a wonderful thing to have to acknowledge that we have experienced these tragedies. But nonetheless, we are here because these tragedies have happened and we're here to support the families. Because the families are what uh, 
are the core to what makes Watsonville happen. So for those families, I say to you, uh, our hearts are with you, our prayers are with you, we are fortunate that you still continue to be here and come out as a community because that's what we are as a community and the community has to always stay strong. I remember the first uh, killing that happened over in Pajaro and I don't remember the dates, it was in the 1990s. It was Jessica Cortez. Yeah, uh, it was uh, uh, a young uh, brother and a young uh, sister. At that time, uh, yes, at that time, I was working for the Santa uh, Cruz County Office of Education, and my role was to work with the community doing um, community organizing around alcohol and drug prevention. And that evening, I had taken four young people from uh, Watsonville area to a meeting in Santa Cruz. One of the young men lived in Pajaro on Gonda Street. And so I, we have a meeting. I stop and uh, give them something to eat, of course, at a fast food. And then we come back to Watsonville. And I drop off the young man in Pajaro, Gonda Street. And there's a group of other young men outside waiting for him. And the first thing they said is, this has happened. And of course, this young man, the first thing that comes to his mind is revenge. Well, unfortunately, revenge doesn't work. That's not what we have to do. What we have to do is make sure that we support our young people in terms of youth violent prevention. And for your information, in case you don't know, here in Watsonville, we are working in youth violence prevention. We have three work groups that meet on a regular basis to address different issues. One with families, another with uh, the police department and neighborhoods, and the other with youth. And so we are making sure that we address the serious, serious issue in terms of youth violence. And But we depend on you as the families and communities to help us in terms of addressing this issue. So I say thank you to you for all of you that have come up to say we've got to do something about it. We can't just talk about it. We have to take some action. And so together, the action that we're going to take is to prevent youth violence prevention. Thank you. Okay, okay we're coming to the end now before the uh, dancers come in. Uh, we, uh, there's a group here that came also to support the Peace and Unity March, and I would like them to also say something because they've been part of a Peace and Unity and they also have helped, helped before. So who can I pass that on to? To me. That's fine. Thank you so much. I just want to start out by saying the prayer of mothers is the most powerful, so thank you so much. Um, hello, good afternoon. Buenas tardes a todos. My name is Debbie Moser. I represent the SGI, a Buddhist layperson's organization. There are many of us SGI members here in the neighborhood. We live in Watsonville, Aptos, Carlitos, Salinas, Santa Cruz. So all the Buddhist way. <laughs> Here. Um, we're happy and honored to be part of this annual Peace and Unity March alongside all of the courageous and compassionate groups and individuals here. Um, the Peace and Unity Coalition, the Revolunas, Brown Berets, Teen Challenge, Barrios Unidos, Somos LGBT, and everyone else. Thank you so much. Each person who stands for peace and unity, each person who stands in support for the parents and families impacted by violence is, is making a positive change in the world. So thank you so much for inviting us to stand with you. Our SGI Buddhist organization is a worldwide movement with the goal of realizing world peace through each person becoming happy. We are transforming society through establishing respect for all life and the happiness of each individual. Although our movement is global in scope, our efforts towards peace are local based on our actions as individuals in our everyday lives. Therefore, as Buddhists, we work to polish our lives to make them shine and to bring out the Buddhahood that exists in all life. 
especially for the young people here today, I would like to share some thoughts from our SGI president, Daisaku Ikeda. So for the young people, when you hold fast to your beliefs and live true to yourself, your true value as a human being shines forth. Buddhism teaches the concept of manifesting one's true nature. This means to reveal your genuine innate self, your true inherent potential, and bring it to shine, illuminating all around you. It refers to your most refined individuality and uniqueness. The important thing is to be patient, to have confidence and determination that you will accomplish something meaningful in the future. Each of you has a mission that only you can fulfill. So um, we continue this daily practice to bring out the best in ourselves and to encourage everyone around us, both in good times and in times of difficulty. We believe that everyone has a Buddha nature inside, a part of ourselves that is wise, compassionate, courageous, and joyful. We also believe that we're all connected to each other because at the core of our lives, we are all Buddhas. Our purpose in life is to help everyone, ourselves and others, bring out that wise, compassionate, courageous, and joyful self. The basic practice that wakes up our Buddhahood is to chant Nam Yo Ho Ren Ge Kyo. We do this every day. Chanting Nam Yo Ho Ren Ge Kyo brings positive change in our lives and leads to our personal growth and happiness, regardless of external circumstances. I and the other SGI members here would like to invite everyone to chant Nam Yo Ho Ren Ge Kyo three times with us, if you would like, as a prayer for peace and unity. Is that okay? So uh, we'll do it one word at a time. Repeat after me, please. Nam, Nam, Myo Ho, Ren Ge, Kyo. Okay, let's do it together three times. Nam Myo Ho Ren Ge Kyo. Nam Myo Ho Ren Ge Kyo. Nam Myo Ho Ren Ge Kyo. Thank you. And thank you again for inviting us to be here today. If you would like to learn more about the SGI and our peace movement, we have a booth um, off to the side here. And I just want to say we're 100% with Watsonville and our community to spread peace and unity and to help each person become happy. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Um, uh, the only speaker I needed that was not here was Gina Castaneda. And uh, uh, si se puede, but if they're not here, we're going to go on and, and come up with the White Hawks. They're going to be doing the danza. I don't know if they're ready. I think they're all here. Uh, they're going to do the danza here, so maybe we can pull the tables a little bit further. Uh, if you want to pull this table just a little further. They're going to do the danza here in this area here. Uh, maybe move it to one side so they can do the danza here. They're going to come in and say the ceremony. And then they, they're going to lead us on a march around the park also. So don't leave. We will, if you want to march around the park, don't leave. We're going to march around this park here. Okay, and um, we'll have them come over here. After they finish the dance, the White Hawks going to lead them. I believe on that side, huh? Yeah. Um, Waiting a couple of people. Okay, they waited in just one couple of people here. Uh, anyway, I want to thank again uh, the mothers who came today. I want to thank the organization that participated. It was fast. Uh, uh, we didn't do the whole march because it costs us a lot of money, but we usually like to march all around the streets. You know, but maybe next year we'll get a little ahead, save a little bit of money, and maybe we can do it, you know. But uh, I, I think the people that participated, I want to thank all of them that have been here, all the workers, all the ones who cook, all the ones who brought the bread, the coffee, the donuts, the bread. If you guys want to get up and walk around and get some more bread, I don't know if there's still some burritos. <laughs> I don't know if the burritos finished, but if they're still there, take them, uh, get burritos. You know, there's bread. So uh, I really wish I could have more water. I don't. I think I I needed to bring more water because I'm I'm dying for thirst. 
<laughs> but you know, uh, that's what we need. The water, which I felt to bring more. Uh, <laughs> but um, maybe we can maybe we can get some ranchito water, some water. Don't even water. Oh, what is it? Oh, you want? Okay, okay. He's so native for the uh, donation for the uh, activity. We we'll use it next year. Red. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so... Uh, do you have any burritos there for the people? Okay, okay. Yeah, no, uh, you want to move the chairs just to the side. Uh, no, we want the mamas to sit down. Just move them to the side so the santas can dance. And do the danza, that's all. Maybe put it over in the shade. Put them, put them flower. Yeah, you can put uh, the chairs, yeah. Yeah, this is a good answer. We just want to pull the chairs. Uh, here's a good enough room for the uh, Santas. Mira, you want to move? Uh, excuse me, Mira, you want to move over here to one side so Santas are going to be dancing, okay? Uh, okay. So, just uh, introduce each other, meet people while they get ready. They're waiting for two more people. So, uh, they were going to do it earlier, but they couldn't get everybody to get it earlier. That's why they're doing it this at 2 o'clock. You can put that in the car. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. You, know, you, want, you want to move the chair a little bit further this way to the shade? You can the shade so you won't be out in the sun. Just to give him enough room to come in and do the dance. Uh, can you get it off? The, the glare. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe show the socialize while they get ready. Socialize everybody and meet people. There's some bread here. Still bread right here if you're hungry for bread. Let me, um, thank you. There's milk. There's bread and milk. There's milk. <laughs> Where's Phil? It's your baby. Go. It's your baby. Bring him over here. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Watsonville uh, Police Department wasn't able to be, but if they come, well, if there's time, we'll let them in. You know, they were going to be working, okay. but they uh, actually promised to work uh, with an organization that they work with called PAL. Uh, if anybody doesn't know about PAL, they actually have a kicker boxing, they have academy, they got cadets, you know, they have soccer. Uh, Gina Castañeda work with soccer, uh, kids with soccer, doing soccer in this community. They're very important because uh, instead of the kids doing something else, they go out and take them out for soccer. So that's very important also. And uh, even, oh, thank you. Oh, uh, thank you because I was dying for thirst. <laughs> thank you, my friend. Gotta take care. I'm very thirsty. <laughs> okay, there's some. I was gonna mention there's some boards here, uh, right here. If you want to walk with a board, do your own sign. Do your own sign here. Uh, a couple of brown berets did some sign here. You can use them for the marsh. Uh, who wants a sign? The, who wants a sign? <laughs> okay. Uh, there's another sign here, the brown berry stick. Let's give it out to, um, let's get it behind. Anybody else wants a sign to walk with? Okay, there we go. Then we got another, another sign right there. There we go. Uh, the other sign. Anybody else wants another sign to walk with? Okay, there's some uh, uh, pencils here. You can do a sign. There's some uh, Do your own sign here. You know, we got uh, four more boards here to walk with. There's some pens here. So you help yourself. Peace and unity. You can just put peace, love, and unity. 
you know, boot no violence, no to violence, and walk with it. So help yourself, there's four more here. Young people, I know young people like to carry those boards. <laughs> young people, you guys want to make a sign and carry those boards? <laughs> okay. And the mothers can carry their pictures. When you walk around, you can get the, your pictures from the altars. And if, uh, if somebody wants to volunteer, uh, just bring it back to me, please. <laughs> Okay. If anybody wants to volunteer to get Jessica Cortez and walk with Jessica Cortez picture, but just bring it back to the altar. Any volunteer? Okay. Uh, she's the main uh, person here that we started the Peace and Unity March with. Yeah. Anybody want to walk with uh, Jalanine oh, Savella, please, uh, two oh. years ago. Yeah. Anybody wants to walk with her? You got the extra hand. You do it? Okay. And then just bring it back to the altar. Because every year, every year I use it again, okay? <laughs> then we got Je Jesse Lopez. He's the one that, whenever you drive by Mac Madonna, and you see that cross over there, Mac Madonna, this is Jesse that got killed there. You know, uh, I don't have my friend here, but I think she left already, but she was here. Um, for Jesse, it's a little picture, but if you can carry it and then bring it to the altar after you finish, um, there we go. You can walk with it. Now, uh, here's a picture. Does somebody get wants to walk? Is a mother? Is that your man? Whose picture is this? You gonna walk two pictures? I'm gonna carry this. Did you want to uh, somebody to carry your son's picture? It doesn't matter. Anybody wants to help her carry her son picture? Okay, Lily's gonna help you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Just uh, return it back to her. This lady right here. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna walk with this one, but this is my sister-in-law. She was 32 years old. She got killed by her husband. That's my ex-sister-in-law. You know, uh, she got at five o'clock in the morning. Her husband gave her three shots. She left one kid, one year old, two two daughters, one year, five years. Uh, she was my best friend in school. That's a couple of things picture. She was my best friend in school. Before I met my husband, my ex-husband, she was my best friend in school, high school. We used to hang together, you know. You know, um, she married this guy from Mexico, he had a mental illness problem and he took her life away, you know. And I always bring it because she's part of my family and she's also my best friend, so I'm going to carry this. Uh, anybody else, been, any picture here that I, where's the, the uh, my, those two pictures, right? Okay, is there any picture here that uh, doesn't have a walker, let me know because, you know, I know the mother has another picture and she's walking. Uh, Rivas, the Senora Rivas, you got yours already, okay. Um, the other one's, um, okay, everybody got a picture. So we got to walk around. After that, um, White Hawks do the danza. Now, I need a, a little explanation because I didn't know about the White Hawks, how is it that they dance four dances? And I'll tell you why, because I learned it. You know, they do the cuatro dances for north, south, east, and west. Because I actually told them, could you do only three dances, you know, turn it uh, to three dances? They said, no, uh, we we have to do four. And I said, and then she explained to me why. I didn't know that, you know, because I'm not into dance, you know, but she told me that it's for, so that every time they do the ceremony, they go, they face the east, they face the west, and the south, uh, west, south, north, the four side of the world. And that's why they do the dance. I, it's a, there's a meeting of, uh, on about it, you know. It's a ceremony. They do it to Mother Earth, and thanking God for the four corners of the world, you know, that including the fire, wind, air, everything we need, and water, air, and wind. And there's one more thing that I forgot. Anyway, they're they're, they're the natures of, of Mother Earth that we need. And nowadays we have to be, we have to be uh, taking care of Earth, you know, because uh, a lot of people don't care about Earth. No le importa el mundo, y está destruyendo lo que está en el mundo. You know, hacemos nuestra parte uh, para poder salvar al mundo para nuestros hijos, porque de aquí a 20 años, no sé cómo vaya a estar el mundo. Pero si cada quien hacemos nuestra parte de cuidar nuestro mundo, uh, no, nuestros hijos, futuros hijos, van a poder sobrevivir más.
más tiempo en este mundo. Y oren a Dios por este presidente porque él todo lo que tiene que hacer es escuchar un botoncito y lo puede explotar todos aquí. Y tú mirad a Hirsch y su esposa allá. You wanna come and say hi? Oh, we're getting, we're getting ready for the uh, dancers. They're not ready to wait for somebody. They're, are you ready? Okay. Hey, good morning. Now you have to wait. Okay. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
que ahorita vamos a dar una marcha. No, we need more. I don't know. Yeah, so you guys will all go away. So en el sidewalk, so y si dos a la vez, porque no creo que quepan tres, tienen que ir dos a la vez, uh, hey, vamos a seguir los danzantes, so, we follow them. the whole thing. I was wondering if he was going to wrap around. I was hoping. We was hoping.
<laughs> it's like you got on the bus. <laughs> And unity. Peace and unity. I can do that both. That'll be quite good. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. Where of course. Are you from? Salas. Nice. Yeah. Ask uh, ask Manny about me.
así, así. Sí, la mamá se puede llevarse las flores. A octava mamá puede dar un ramo de flores en el altar. Ah, sí se puede llevar la veladora. Sí, como no. <risa> ya, yeah. la mamá se puede llevarse las flores, son para ellas. Si quiere llevarse una veladora para poner a un lado a su hijo, también está bien. Le damos las gracias a todos que participaron en este día. Estuvo muy bonito. Gracias a todos los que vinieron. Okay. Ojalá el otro año sea un poquito más mejor. Podemos caminar un poco más marcha, pero estuvo bonito. Gracias a todos. A las mamás. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. This concludes the event of the Peace Unity March this year. Thank you so much.